¿Qué hora es? Hora de aprender español. Friends, today I want to give you something in Spanish that's going to really extend your conversational skills in Spanish. I want to talk about the past tense. Now, over the next two episodes, I'm going to be giving you two different ways to say things that have happened in the past before now, but they are distinctly different. So today I want to talk about the past tense, which is also known as the preterite. So on the next episode, we'll be talking about the other way. So I really want to set up what do we mean by the preterite so that you'll know the difference when we get to the next type. So the preterite, think about the preterite as something that happened in the past, usually one time, it's over and it's done with. Okay, this is not something that was ongoing in the past, that went on over time, um, that we can't exactly put a great time frame on. This is something that happened, it was over and it was done with. That's what we're talking about today in this episode. So let me just give you a couple of examples to just to get it in, in our minds what we're talking about. So some examples in English would be like, I saw him yesterday. That, that happened, it was done, it was over with, and you know it's, it's kind of a finished, completed action. Okay, another example would be like, um, she called me last week. So it doesn't really have to be something recently or something long in the past. It's really something that happened, it was done and over with. Okay, so just to give you a contradictory phrase, something that would not be the predator would be, uh, we used to visit her on Sundays. That would not be the predator because that went on over time. It was, it was not a specific time frame. So that would not be the predator. That's what we'll talk about in the next episode. Well, today though, it's like I said, it, it happened, it was done and over with. So that's the predator tense. Now, the predator tense is very easy. We can do the preterite tense the same as we've been doing most verbs in previous episodes by learning a set of endings. And so I'm going to give you AR verbs and we're going to talk about a slight modification after that. Then we'll do ERs and IRs. And then at the end of the episode, I want to give you some practice sentences that you can try before our next episode. Okay, so with that being said, let's get going on the preterite tense. Okay, now to start out, let's look at our board, and you guessed it, we're going to draw a chart, okay? Now we're going to talk first about AR verbs in the preterite. Now the good thing about Spanish is we can just simply learn a new set of endings in most tenses in Spanish. And this is what the preterite tense is. It's just a new set of endings, but it implies something completely new. Okay, so let me give you these endings. Now, first of all, the yo form is e. This is a little different than what we're used to. E with an accent on it. So if I wanted to say, I swam, you remember the verb nadar we've talked about in previous episode. Um, we could say, I swam would be yo nade. We're going to do the same thing. Let's say, for example, we've got the verb nadar. We're going to do the same thing we've always done take off that AR. If it's an ER verb, we're going to take off the ER. If it's an IR, we're going to take off the IR. Okay, so we take off that AR right there, and then we put their appropriate ending. So what we have is yo nade, for I swam. Okay? Next is going to be aste. We just simply put a TE at the end of that present tense ending. So you swim or did you swim would be nadaste, okay? Now down here, we've got to make a, a little mental note. The third person, the el, ella, and usted form is an O with an accent on it, nado. Now you, first of all, when you say the word, say that accent, nado. Let's think about back when we did the present tense early on in the show. In present tense, if you remember, this form in the present is an O with no accent. So we would say, I swim would be nado. Now see, if we don't say that accent, then it becomes confusing. So if we say, el nado, and we don't really say that accent, it kind of sounds like he, I swim. So 
Accents are important. Now, I know I told you that early on, but they really are important. We have to say them and we have to write them. They're there for a reason. So make sure you remember that this accent is there in the third person singular. So nado, él nado, he swam. Ella nado, she swam. And usted nado, you in the respectful form swam. Okay. Now let's go up here. Let me erase this to prevent any confusion. And let's go up here to the right to our plural side. Now you're going to find something interesting about the nosotros form. It's the same in both tenses. It's in the same in present and it's the same in the preterite. And some people say, well, how would you know the difference if you're speaking Spanish? How would they know the difference? Don't worry. Usually uh, people understand by context. They do. And, and if you're talking about something that happened yesterday and you already know, the person already knows you're talking about yesterday or sometime in the past, they're going to understand that you, when you say nadamos, that it means we swam in the past. Okay, the vosotros form, our not so popular form, is hasteis, vosotros hasteis, nada hasteis, there we go. So, hasteis is the ending. <clears throat> and then down here on the bottom right is aron, A R O N. They swam, ellos nadaron, or ellas nadaron. You all, plural, swam, ustedes nadaron. Okay, so that is our base, those are our basic endings for AR verbs in the preterite tense. Now, I do want to show you one little modification here that we need to look at. Over here <clears throat> to, the, to the right, I'm going to put a couple of different types of verbs. First of all, there's the C-A-R verbs and the Z-A-R verbs and the G-A-R verbs. Now, I've told you many times that we have rules in language, any language, and we have rule breakers. Here are the rule breakers. But there's only one little thing you need to remember about this, okay? When a verb ends in C-A-R or Z-A-R or G-A-R, we have to look at the yo form specifically in the preterite tense. We're only talking about the yo form in the preterite tense, okay? That's it. Nothing, none of the other forms, no other tenses. Okay, so let me give you an example here. Buscar is an AR verb that ends with C-A-R. There's an example of uh, a C-A-R. And let's look at a, a Z-A-R. To begin, empezar. And then a G-A-R, we could use jugar, to play. Okay, these are good examples of these three types. Now what happens is when we put this into the preterite tense, we're going to have to make a slight modification. Remember, only the yo form only in the preterite. The other forms of these verbs will do just the same, okay? Now, what we're going to do with the C-A-R verb, buscar, for example, when we put this into the preterite tense, normally it would look like this. Now, remember, this is only the yo form, the yo form, not the el or the ella, okay? So, yo forms. I'll put that up here just so we can remember that as a reference. Okay, normally it would look like this, right? We would put the, the E with an accent for I looked for or I searched for, but we have to make a little modification. With C-A-R verbs, what we're going to do is we're going to change this C into a Q-U, and then we're going to put that. So I looked for your busque. And that's, that's the only thing we have to remember with C-A-R verbs is that we change the yo form Change that C to a Q-U, okay? That's not too hard to remember. Now let's look at Z-A-R verbs. We're going to make a little modification here too. Normally you think we'd just take off the A-R and we'd put the E with the accent. Well, what we're going to have to do is change this Z to a C. Empecé. I began. Yo empecé. Okay? Now for G-A-R verbs, we'll have to take off the AR and we will simply put a U and then an E. Yo jugué, I played. Okay, so that's the only little modification that we have to remember. C-A-R's, Z-A-R's, and G-A-R's. Only in your forms, only in the preterite. Okay, so just put that in your notes and try to start practicing a few of those. And before long, you won't have to think too much about it. It'll just become second nature. And the biggest thing is, the more you practice, you internalize the language. 
And internalized means that you put it into practice so much to the point that it becomes natural and it sounds right to you. I promise, the more you practice, the more that this all becomes easy.